Heading, Rural Workers. Footnote. While full recognition is given to the indispensable aid of laymen in all evangelistic activity, see pages 110 to 115, it is clear that the inhabitants of the rural areas will bear the warning message only as regular workers and laymen unite in heralding the gospel. Thus, in this volume, devoted solely to counsel to the evangelistic worker in presenting the picture of evangelism in the rural areas, statements appear calling the layman to the work in the less densely populated areas. Signed, Compilers, and a footnote. Subheading, Beginners Enter on Work Fields. We are nearing the close of this earth's history. We have before us a great work, the closing work of giving the last warning message to a sinful world. There are men who will be taken from the plow, from the vineyard, from various other branches of work, and sent forth by the Lord to give this message to the world. The world is out of joint. As we look at the picture, the outlook seems discouraging. But Christ greets with hopeful assurance the very men and women who cause us discouragement. In them, he sees qualifications that will enable them to take a place in his vineyard. If they will constantly be learners, through his providence he will make them men and women fitted to do a work that is not beyond their capabilities. Through the impartation of the Holy Spirit, he will give them power of utterance. Many of the barren, unworked fields must be entered by beginners. The brightness of the Savior's view of the world will inspire confidence of many workers who, if they begin in humility and put their hearts into the work, will be found to be the right men for the time and place. Christ sees all the misery and despair of the world, the sight of which would bow down some of our workers of large capabilities with a weight of discouragement so great that they would not know how even to begin the work of leading men and women to the first round of the ladder. Their precise methods are of little value. They would stand above the lower rounds of the ladder saying, Come up where we are, but the poor souls do not know where to put their feet. Christ's heart is cheered by the sight of those who are poor in every sense of the term, cheered by his view of the ill-used ones who are meek, cheered by the seemingly unsatisfied hungering after righteousness, by the inability of many to begin. He welcomes, as it were, the very condition of things that would discourage many ministers. He corrects our erring piety, giving the burden of the work for the poor and needy in the rough places of the earth to men and women who have hearts that can feel for the ignorant and for those that are out of the way. The Lord teaches these workers how to meet those he wishes them to help. They will be encouraged as they see doors opening for them to enter places where they can do medical missionary work. Having little confidence, they give God all the glory. The common people are to take their place as workers, sharing the sorrows of their fellow men as they, the Savior shared the sorrows of humanity, they will, by faith, See him working with them. Testimonies, Volume 7, pages 270, 272, 1902. Subheading, Young Workers for Hard Places. The young men and women who give themselves to the work of teaching the truth and laboring for the conversion of souls should be vitalized by the Holy Spirit, and then they should go forth without the camp into the most unpromising places. The Lord has not given to those of little experience the work of preaching to the churches. The message is to be proclaimed in the highways and hedges. Manuscript 3, 1901. Subheading, Married Men and Women in Neglected Fields. Let married men and women who know the truth go forth to the neglected fields to enlighten others. Follow the example of those who have done pioneer work in new fields. Wisely work in places where you can best labor. Learn the principles of health reform in order that you may be able to teach them to others. By reading and studying the various books and periodicals on the subject of health, learn to give treatment to the sick and thus to do better work for the Master. Letter 136, 1902. Subheading, carried by those from large centers. Those of our people who are living in large centers would gain a precious experience if, with their Bibles in their hands and their hearts open to the impressions of the Holy Spirit, 
they would go forth to the highways and byways of the world with the message they have received. Review and Herald, August 2, 1906. Subheading, In the Mountains and Valleys. While I was in Lakeport, Northern California, I was deeply impressed with the fact that here was a place where faithful work should be done in giving the message of truth to the people. In this mountain region are many souls who need the truths of the third angel's message. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, we are to proclaim this truth for this time among the settlements in the mountains and valleys. Its solemn warnings are to be echoed and re-echoed, and the message must come to the people quickly. It must be given line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Without delay, and wise, intelligent men and women should engage in the work of sowing the gospel seed. The Lord will work through those who will open the scriptures to the people who have made their homes in these retired places of the country. I appeal to my brethren and sisters to unite in doing this good work and carry it to completion. The reason why I call your attention to Lakeport and its surrounding settlements is that these places have not yet received a right impression regarding the truth for this time. It may be that among our people there are those who will consent to use their means for the opening of missionary fields. To such, I would say, for the Master's sake, do what you can to help. We have not yet investigated fully how large a field for labor lies here, but Lakeport is one of the places presented to me as in need of our attention. I have much to say in regard to these settlements in the mountains. There are like settlements near Washington where a similar work should be done. Will not our people work more faithfully in the highways and hedges? Commercial enterprises have so long absorbed the interest and capabilities of so many Seventh-day Adventists that they are largely unfitted to do the work of bringing the light of present truth before those who are ignorant of it. We should not be content to permit such a condition to continue. There are many of our people who, if they would go out of the cities and begin to labor in these byways and also highways, would recover physical health. I urge our brethren to go out as missionaries two and two to these country places. Go in humility. Christ has given an example, and the Lord will certainly bless the efforts of those who will move out in fear of God, bearing the message of the Savior, gave to the first disciples. The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Manuscript 65, 1908. Subheading, Missionary Families for Towns and Villages. Brethren who wish to change their location, who have the glory of God in view, and feel that individual responsibility rests upon them to do others good, to benefit and save souls from Christ withheld not his precious life, should move into towns and villages where there is little or no light and where they can be of real service and bless others with their labor and experience. Missionaries are wanted to go into towns and villages and raise the standard of truth that God may have his witnesses scattered all over the land, that the light of truth may penetrate where it has not yet reached, and the standard of truth be raised where it is not yet known. Jesus did not neglect the villages. The record declares that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Now is it not the duty of some who are standing idle here, Battle Creek, to go where they can represent Christ and his precious truth? General Conference Bulletin, March 20, 1891.